It all started one fateful afternoon in the summer of 2012. I was working as a bellboy at the Trump Hotel in Hong Kong on an internship program. It was marvelous. I come from a very small farm town in Michigan, and this was my first time in a big city, and I loved everything about it. It was all I could have ever dreamed of, and more. But little did I know, it was all about to change. I was stacking someone's tacky luggage when the door behind me swept open. My loins trembled as the scent of toupee adhesive and spray tan swept through my nasal cavity. I wanted nothing more than to turn around and see the golden god behind these scents. But I couldn't move. I was frozen. There's a tap on my shoulder. Young man, the voice said. I thought to myself, Oh my god, could this be him? There was only one way to be sure. I gathered all of my strength and turned around. Was I hallucinating? This couldn't be real. It was him. It was Donald. He stood there in front of me, like a tall stallion, with his oily orange skin glistening in the sunlight as if he were a soggy Cheeto. His hair unkept and messy, like a gorgeous rat's nest. He was beautiful. More beautiful than I could have ever dreamed. Y yes sir I said nervously. I need you to bring these bags up to my room, he said sternly, like a grandfather upset that a news broadcast interrupted Jeopardy. His voice wrapped around my body like a queso around a smothered burrito. I was unable to speak. What is this feeling I'm having? I forced myself to talk, but only the word what would come out. I don't have all fucking day, you loser, he said next. Uh, uh, I'm so sorry, sir, I whimpered as I grabbed his bags. I'll get these up to you immediately. He shook his head and trotted off towards the elevator. As he got further and further, my eyes continued to be glued to his rear end. His gorgeous ass flapped behind him like a mouth-watering stack of pancakes in his pants. My hunger for pancakes had never been stronger. And that's when it happened. He looked back. He caught me staring at his donk. He could have me immediately fired for this, but he didn't. Instead, he smiled and continued to hop on the elevator. What is happening? Am I losing my mind? I didn't come here to find love. But did love find me? No, it couldn't be. I ran to the bathroom and splashed cold water on my face. This is insane. I must be crazy, I said to myself in the mirror as the cold water dripped down my face in uniform. I stood there for minutes, just looking into my reflection. I gathered myself, dried off and went to the front desk. I need to take a break, I demanded from Helen, the hotel manager. Yeah, that's okay, sweetie. You go take a break. Just be back in 15, she growled to me. I hope 15 minutes is enough time for me to figure out what the fuck is going on. I was almost out of the door before the phone rang. Helen stopped me. Wait! She yelled at me as she hung up the phone. Take those bags up to Mr. Trump's room before you go on break. He needs them now, and he asked specifically for you to bring them. He did what? He asked for me? 
Specifically? Why me? So many questions raced through my mind, like a cool teenager on Healy's in a mall. I gathered Mr. Trump's luggage and headed for the elevator. His luggage said Made in China on it. How ironic. My heartbeat was faster than the elevator as it ticked upwards. I wonder why he asked for me. What could this be about? I wonder if he likes me. How could he like me? He just met me. The elevator rang as we reached the penthouse. I walked down the hall to his door. I've walked this hall so many times, but never before has it seemed this long. It felt like an eternity. I wiped the sweat from my forehead and put my hand up to his door to knock. He answered the door wearing only a robe. The robe opened just enough for me to see his beautiful saggy chest. A chest that would give Betty White a run for her money. Finally! I've been waiting! He complained and he took his bags and slammed his door. My heart sank. I guess he just wanted his bags. As soon as I began to pick up the shattered pieces of my heart, the door whipped open again. Here, yeah, I almost forgot, he said as he handed me a wad of money as a tip and a piece of paper. Don't be late, he said with a smile as he closed the door once more. I stood there, paralyzed, holding what looked like hundreds of dollars and this note. What was this note? I pulled it up from the money and held it up. The note said, Be back here at 8 p.m. and get yourself something nice to wear. My knees trembled as I read it. This couldn't be happening. But it was. I told Helen I wasn't feeling well and left work early. I couldn't be there anymore. I needed to go home. I walked through downtown thinking about everything. Should I go back to meet him at 8 p.m.? No! I can't do that. What am I thinking? I'm thinking about him. I couldn't fight it anymore. I had to admit it. I wanted his generic 2006 Perez Hilton Jello body. And I wanted it bad. But before long, we had a new problem. My lustful thoughts had awoken the purple headed yogurt slinger in my pants. This walk was getting real hard, real fast. I needed to get home. Luckily, I lived right around the corner. I opened the door and quickly jogged up the stairs, making sure nobody saw the bulging blood sausage I was rocking. I sat down on the couch, and before I could even take a breath, my roommate Nicole opened the door and came out. What's up, you fat bitch? She asked. Uh, not a whole lot. I lied. I had to. I couldn't tell her. Why are you acting so fucking weird? She asked. I'm not, I said. Uh, I met a boy. Is he cute? She asked while making a sandwich. Gorgeous. His face is wrinkled like a beautiful, overflowing flesh toilet, I said daydreaming. What the fuck does that mean? That's really weird. Like, nobody fucking talks like that, she said. He's also rich. Very rich, I followed. Oh. You go get that dick, boo. I gazed at the clock. 6 p.m.? Already? 
I hadn't even gone shopping yet. I rushed to the mall. I needed to get an outfit and get home in time to change. I quickly found a perfect black suit and I was on my way home. I googled him on the train home. I wanted to know everything about him. His Wikipedia page says he's 69 years young. What a magical number. I'd like to find out more about that. It also says that his nickname is The Donald, but I'm pretty sure they mean Daddy. I was so excited for our second meeting. I couldn't believe that this was happening. I got changed and looked at myself in the mirror. You can do this, I repeated to my reflection. I got myself all pretty and I headed out. The walk there was short, but it felt like an eternity. I was so nervous for our second meeting. Never in my wildest dreams could I imagine this happening. I reached the building and made my way up the elevator. My heart and Meat Monster, both throbbing more and more with each floor we passed. The elevator rang loud and opened her doors like a white girl's legs on prom night. I forced myself to walk down the hall. My legs were heavy, fighting me with every step. I looked at my phone. 7.58 p.m. Just in time. I knocked gently on the penthouse door. The door creaked open. And there he was, handsome as ever, like a giant melting fat carrot with fake hair. He was wearing a gorgeous suit. You look good, he said as I entered the room. He locked the door behind me and asked if I wanted to take a seat. Why did you ask me here, I said as I sat down. You know exactly why I asked you here, he said as he brushed his hand against my cheek, leaving a stream of self-tanner dripping down me. He sat beside me and put his hand on my thigh, caressing me up and down. The only thing I knew was that I wanted to ride the elevator to the top of his Trump Tower. He moved closer, putting his cold, dead lips on my neck. I shivered with excitement. His hands felt like an old, dried-out gingerbread house. I was in love. I should tell you something, he breathed onto my neck. Tell me later, I said as I reached for his pants. Fine but close your eyes, he said. I was reluctant, but obedient. I unzipped his pants and touched his cold, scaly thighs. I opened my eyes as I grabbed his thick, long tail. What? 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 what, what? Donald Trump is a fucking reptilian! I screamed and let go of his tail. His neck flared up like that dinosaur in Jurassic Park. Yeah, you know which one I mean. He hissed and leapt for the window, leaving behind nothing but broken glass and shattered hearts. And then a hyper-realistic skeleton popped out. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skull will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. Spooky, scary skeletons speak with such a screech. You'll shake and shudder in surprise when you hear these zombies shriek. 